In this last lecture, we'll try to pull some of this together in terms of how one thinks about marketing strategies more generally, and then more specifically how that plays into the marketing mix. In the developing a promotional mix and uh, marketing mix more generally, uh, there's really, uh, you have to decide whether you're trying to come up with a strategy that is that tries to take the product and get it out there or whether or not you're trying to create a situation where customers are trying to pull the product in to your, into them, uh, into the retailers, if you will. And those differences are called a push strategy and a, a pull strategy. In developing the promotional mix, organizations have to decide whether they want a something, a, a strategy of awareness of the customers that comes from them being get, seeing the product pushed to them, that is they, they find the product in the store, or whether they find out that they want the product because they hear about it and then start demanding that the stores put it on their shelves. That's a pull strategy. You're trying to motivate the, um, the, the, the distribution of your product, either through customer awareness or because the value chain, the steps in the distribution process can benefit from it. For example, a push strategy attempts to motivate the intermediaries, that is the wholesalers and retailers, to push the product down through to their customers, to, your, to their customers for you. When a push strategy is used, the company attempts to motivate the wholesalers and retailers to make the product available to their customers. A pull strategy, on the other hand, uses promotion directly to the consumer to try to demand a product, to, to create demand for the product, so that the consumers exert pressure on marketing on the marketing channels uh, to the various members in order for them to make it available customers start coming in and asking for your product, for example. A company that can use either of these strategies or it can use a variation or a combination or of, of the two. The exclusive use of advertising indicates a pull strategy because you're trying to get the customers to know about you and therefore ask about you. Uh, personal selling to marketing channel members, like personal selling to wholesalers or to retailers, um, is a way to that indicates a sort of a purse of a push strategy. You're trying to get it on the shelves so the customers know about it. Both of those are useful to consider. This figure shows how those strategies work. Personal sell selling indicates a push strategy. Advertising only indicates a pull strategy, and you could see how these vary. It also helps influence how much of the value goes to the producer. Because if you think about it, as a producer, if I'm using a push strategy, I'm trying to get a wholesaler to own my product. And one of the, one of the things that that wholesaler is going to want to do is it's, it's going to see risk in carrying this product. Retailer will see risk in carrying the product. So they're going to demand a little higher return, that is higher margin, when they sell the product so that they could justify that risk. Whereas on a pull strategy, the customers are already asking for it. So when the retailer comes to the wholesaler and the wholesaler comes to the producer, they already believe there's a market. So there's less market risk on their time, on their side. So they're going to be more willing to accept perhaps lower, slightly lower, and I'm talking about just marginally lower margins because the customers want that product. When a highly, when a well-branded, well, -branded, well uh, high reputation a producer, uh, like Nike, for example, introduces a new product. There's a lot of demand from the marketplace. All of the retailers want to carry it. And so they go back to the wholesalers. The wholesalers talk to the producers. And they're, the producer is likely to get a higher price at wholesale or a higher margin so that they can get more profit on their side. So it's one way to create a distribution channel which, uh, or to create more, more power for the producer in the distribution channel, and thus more of the value that's ultimately given by the customer, a larger percent of that accrues to the producer rather than to the, uh, to the distribution channel itself. So those are the strategies that are in people's minds as they move this process forward. The marketing mix of a company depends upon its objectives. It's important to recognize that promotion 
uh, is only one element of the marketing strategy and it must be tied carefully to the goals of the firm and the overall marketing marketing object objectives as well as as well as other elements of the marketing strategy increasing demand for a product is probably the most typical promotional objective stimulating demand often through advertising and sales promotion is particularly important when the firm is using the pull strategy another goal of promotion is to stabilize sales by maintaining the status quo that is the current sales level of a product you want to maintain that an important role of any promotional program is to inform potential buyers about the organization and its products a major portion of advertising in the, United, in the United States, particularly in daily newspapers, is informational, just telling people about the product. Promotion is also used to remind customers that an established organization is still around and still sells certain products that, that have uses and benefits that people are aware of, but they need to be reminded of. Reinforcement promotion attempts to assure current users the pro of the product that they have made the right choice they should continue to make choice and continues them to get them uh, to chose how to get the most satisfaction from their product maybe other uses or how often they use it and try to drive up usage of the products promotional positioning uses promotion to create and maintain the image of a product in the buyer's mind it's a natural result of market segmentation in both promotional positioning and market segmentation, the firm targets a given product or brand at a promotion of the to at a portion, a niche, a segment of the total market. So, if we were to summarize the importance of marketing strategy, um, and the uh, the importance of creating value through this marketing mix. We think about marketing mix and how it must be carefully integrated into a complete and effective marketing strategy. And by mix, of course, we mean products, the product life cycle. We need pricing, appropriate pricing and those choices, the distribution or the placement of the product, and finally promotion. Uh, companies with an effective marketing mix get competitive advantage. They generally find it in some aspect of their mix. Advantages often come when, one, when a company excels in a particular, like in its distribution strategy or it's in promotion, it's extremely good at branding, or it has ex extremely good products, uh, or, it, or alternatively has a low price or is very good at the pricing strategy. It excels in one or more of these parts of the marketing mix as it puts its products in the market. Companies have to monitor their demand over time. We have this product life cycle going on on each of the products, on product lines and, and, and whole families of products. And all of that has to be managed as the dynamics of market demand change over time. This is this, the importance of marketing and also many of its challenges. Lots of real opportunities for strong careers if one becomes particularly skilled in any one area, any one part of this marketing mix, or overall in a more general management kind of model. But that's the nature of marketing and why it's so important to organizations. So let's uh, continue this in a discussion online on Moodle. Well, I'm going to ask you on the Moodle discussion to talk about the product life cycle and how a product's life cycle affects its marketing strategy over time. Talk about the difference between publicity and advertising, how they're related, how they can trade off one another. Want to distinguish between two ways to set your base price for a new product. If you remember that discussion, let's talk about that a little bit. And what does the personal selling process involve? How do you go through those steps? What are the steps and why is each one important? So I look forward to uh, following the discussion online and learning more about marketing by discussing some of these really important issues. And we'll see you in the next module.